Part one of my introduction to the Curves tool, we took a detailed look at how to manipulate tonal range, tonal balance and contrast using this tool. And in particular, we focused on how to decide where to place the points on a curve in order to create the most effective image. Now, if you missed part one, um, check out the description for a link, um, because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to take a look at how the Curves tool can be used to manipulate color. So in what follows, we're going to take a look at how to use the Curves tool to color correct a color image. And then we're going to move on to what I think is a lot more interesting, how we can use the Curves tool to tone or grade a color image. Before we do either of those though, we're going to stick with a black and white image and we're going to take a look at how the Curves tool can be used to work with color, not just tonal range and contrast. And we're going to stick with a black and white image simply because it's easier to illustrate the changes we're making. So we have no kind of background colors interfering. Any color that appears in the image is color that we've added deliberately and intentionally. Okay, so let's make a start. Let's close down that group and create a new curve. Now, of course, I can do exactly what I've done with previous curves. I can alter the tonal range and contrast by adding points to the curve. So if I place a point in the mid-tone and drag towards the top left, what I'm doing is I'm brightening the image overall, particularly in the midtones. If we want to work with color though, we need to switch away from what's called the RGB composite curve. So what this curve is doing, you'll see there's a little drop down menu here. This is the RGB composite curve and it's brightening all three channels by the same amount. What you'll see when you click this menu is you can select red, green or blue. So let's delete this point and let's switch to working with the red channel. And you'll see you get immediate visual feedback here. So it's switched to red, we're working with the red channel. Now, when I add a point and brighten the midtones, what I'm doing is I'm just brightening the midtones in the red channel. So if we look at that point on his face here, um, so I'm going to hover over his face. If you look now at the info palette top right, you'll see the prior values on the left, so RGB, were set at 140. When I make this change with the curve, green and blue are still 140, but red is 157. So what's happened here is the red value for that pixel has been boosted, the green value and the blue value have remained constant. We can do the same for the green and the blue channel. Okay, so you remember that when we're working with the RGB curve, going above or towards the top left from the baseline brightens an image, while going below or towards the bottom right of the baseline darkens an image. Now exactly the same thing happens with the individual color curves, but the result is slightly unexpected. So we've added blue, increasing the value of blue will make the image look blue, but what happens when we subtract blue? What happens is we end up with a kind of yellowy brown tone. Now the reason for this, if we take a look at an area's face again and you take a look at the info palette, you'll see the starting values for the red, green and blue were 163, but the output values now are 163 for red, 163 for green and 135 for blue. So there's equal amounts of red and green and less blue. So why has the image gone yellow? Well, red and green combine to produce yellow. If we take a look at the color wheel, you'll see why. So I've got my preferences set to color wheel rather than um, Adobe color picker, um, simply because it makes it easier to explain things for this video. So around the edge, we have the primary colors, red, green, and blue. And between them, we have the secondary colors, so yellow, cyan, and magenta. And you'll see that they're kind of opposite one another. So equal amounts of red and green give you a kind of yellowy tone. Equal amounts of green and blue give you cyan, and equal amounts of blue and red give you kind of magenta. So when I'm subtracting blue, I'm getting the opposite, which is yellow. If I subtract red, I'll get the opposite, which is cyan. And if I subtract green, I'll get the opposite, which is magenta. So let's cancel that. And I've got a little graphic of the color wheel here on the top of the screen. So let's reset this blue point and let's switch now to the green channel. So when I add green, we add a green tone. Now, when I subtract it, if you look at the color wheel, what I'm going to get is magenta. So I now have equal amounts of red and blue, but less green. So equal amounts of red and blue between the two is magenta. And by the same token, if we go to the red channel, I can add red, which obviously increases the red. But when I subtract it, what I've got now is equal amounts of green and blue, which is cyan. So once you have this kind of color wheel in your head, you'll have a very good idea about how to manipulate color using curves. Okay, so what we've done so far is relatively straightforward. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. 
You'll remember with the RGB curve, we can add multiple points. And again, it's the same for individual colors. So let me just deactivate this curve for a moment because I want to make two changes. First of all, I'm going to bring down the white point. So what you'll see now is, again, as with the previous example, the entire curve is below the baseline. So we're adding a yellowy brown tone. What I want to do on this occasion, though, is I want to add a second point and I want to mildly push the blue values. That actually make it a little bit more pronounced. So what you'll see now is the midtone values for the blue are going to stay the same. There's going to be a mild increase in the blues in the shadows and a fairly pronounced decrease in the blues for the highlights. So what this is, this is going to split tone the image. It's going to add blue to the shadows and it's going to add yellow to the highlights. So when we activate this, you can see I've kind of got this split tone effect. Now you probably wouldn't want to process an image like this, but I'm, I'm kind of greatly exaggerating the effect here. So you can see now, if we take a look at one of the dark areas, and you take a look at the info palette, red and green are 9, blue is 15. If we take a look at one of the highlight areas, you'll see that red and green are 248 and blue is 203. So by manipulating the curve in this way, I can tone the shadows one way and I can tone the highlights another way. By the same token, we can manipulate all three curves. So one of my favorite curves for toning both black and white and color images is one that looks a little bit like this. So I'm starting off by adding yellow to the highlights and the midtones, but not, not so much to the shadows. I'm now going to go to the green channel, add a tiny little bit of green. Then I'm going to go to the red and add a little bit more red. Now when we switch back to the RGB curve, you'll see now you can see all three color curves. So what I've done is I've added a little bit of green, a bit more red, and I've subtracted yellow, uh, sorry, I've subtracted blue, which adds yellow. Now this is one of my favorite ways of adding a sepia tone to an image. So we're adding quite sophisticated tone here. If I wanted to make the shadows a little bit colder, if I go back to the blue channel now, and perhaps we pull down the highlights a little bit more, and we add some blue to the shadows. So what we have now is kind of like it's kind of like a sepia tone uh, in the midtones. Let's go back to the RGB channel. In the midtones, it's a little bit difficult to see, but a little bit of green and a bit of red. So we've got warmth to the midtones, um, but the shadows are a lot cooler because we've added more blue. At first, this will look a little bit complicated, and particularly if you're trying to look at all three curves at once, you may struggle to work out what's going on. But kind of just go back, manipulate one at a time. Um, particularly bear in mind this color wheel. So subtracting blue adds yellow, subtracting red adds cyan, and subtracting green adds magenta. Once you kind of get the hang of the basics, what you can do with the curves tool is make very, very sophisticated and precise changes to the colors of your images. In a moment, we're gonna move on to look at how to use the curves tool to work with color images. But before we do, there's a couple of last points I'd like to make. Let's turn off the color wheel. First of all, when you tone an image in this way, because you're increasing or decreasing the brightness of individual channels, what you're effectively doing is you're increasing or decreasing the brightness of the image as a whole. So if I add a more pronounced tone and we toggle this on and off, what you can see is the image as a whole is getting brighter. Now, sometimes this won't be a problem, but if it is, you can change the blend mode of this curves layer and you can change it from normal to color. What you'll see immediately is the image gets a lot darker. So what we're doing here is we're manipulating the color, but the original tonal balance of the image remains fairly constant. Now, the only downside of doing this is, is when you've got very bright highlights or very deep shadows that you also want to tone. So let's go back to the RGB curve. Now you can see in our blue curve, what we've done is we decreased the amount of blue, which should add yellow. Now, when we're physically subtracting an amount, so when we're set to normal blend mode, this does add yellow. But when you switch to color blend mode, you can't pull a value down when you're only affecting the color because you need to affect the brightness too. So it depends on the image that you're working with, but if an image becomes too bright or too dark when you make the change, switch to color blend mode. If toning the shadows or the highlights is important, this will have this problem here of you can't tone the highlights and the shadows in color blend mode. It's just something to bear in mind when you're working on your images. And normally you'll probably find that normal blend mode works well. Okay, so let's switch now to how we can use these techniques to work with color images. And in the first, and this is a portrait of a friend of mine out in Dubai, we're gonna look at how we can color correct an image using a curve. And in the second, we'll look at how to tone or grade an image. Okay, what I've done with this image is I've, cr I've created two problematic versions. One that has a green tint, so maybe the image was shot under old fluorescent lighting. 
and second where the image is too warm so maybe the maybe your white balance setting was wrong before we start I should say that you're always much better off setting white balance and correcting tints in camera raw or Lightroom you're much better off working with the raw file than you are in Photoshop. But if you're stuck with a JPEG or a file that you can't correct in any other way, then the Curves tool is a great technique. Okay, so first off we have the green tint version. Okay, so let's create a curve. And you remember that if we have too much green, what we need to do is we need to switch to the green curve and we need to reduce the green. So we're gonna be adding magenta. So let's bring that down. And to me, somewhere around there looks about right. Let's compare that to the original version maybe a little bit further even. So let's bring it down a touch more. So the color looks about right, but you'll notice the tonal balance has changed. That's because we've decreased the green curve. So what I'm gonna do now is switch this curve to color blend mode. So I'm just affecting the color, not the brightness. And let's compare the two. And I think those now are pretty much spot on. So I've corrected a common error there with um, the tint of the image, a slightly green tint, which I've corrected by adding that curve. Slightly more complicated when you come to an image that's overly warm or overly cold insofar as you need to adjust both the blue and the red curves. Um, so let's start with the blue. Let's add some blue um, and let's subtract some red. So effectively I'm adding blue and I'm adding cyan. Now that looks reasonably similar. We'll come back to that. Again though let's switch to color blend mode so we're not affecting the density of the image. And let's take a look at the two. Okay, so maybe my amended version has gone just a little bit cold there. So let's go back, let's nudge that red a fraction and we'll go back to the blue curve and we'll nudge that fraction the opposite way. So not adding quite so much blue. And again, I think probably that's pretty much spot on. So let me reiterate though, this is not a great technique unless you absolutely have to edit the file in Photoshop, but it is a very, very powerful way of tweaking color and changing color balance using one simple curve. So for a too warm image, we added blue, we subtracted red. If it was an image that was too cold, we'd do the opposite, we'd subtract blue and we'd add red. To finish up, I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes talking about how you can use these techniques to tone or grade color images. So let's switch to another example now. Um, I quite like this portrait, but the color for me the color was wrong. Um, her skin tones are lovely and warm. The background is a little bit it's cool, but it's drab, and kind of the white grayish area behind it was it kind of just didn't seem to fit with the rest of the image. What I wanted to do was tone the image um, a to unify it, so it had a kind of an overall theme that worked for the image, um, and b just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now the curve I used for this image was this one. So what you'll see here is, let's just look at the curves individually. So with the blue curve, you'll see that through the shadows and the midtones, I'm adding blue. And in the highlights, I'm removing blue. So I'm adding quite a lot of yellow to the bright highlights. Now, if we think about the area of the image that this is gonna affect, you can see, as I zoom over the image, whereabouts in the curve these points lie. So kind of all this area here, this dull, drab, gray bit in the background, to a greater or lesser extent, is gonna be yellow. There's going to be some yellow added to the very brightest highlights of her skin and there's going to be blue added to these, these darker areas. I also amended the green curve. This is a simpler change. I'm just going to add a kind of touch of green to the image as a whole. So when we activate this layer, what you see is kind of, it's as though the image has been washed, washed over with a particular color. And for me now, this is a lot more unified. You've got a nice complementary balance of colors here through blues, greens and yellows. Her skin tones kind of look more uniform. The, the highlight on her shoulder there matches the highlight in the background. If we turn it off again, you'll notice the skin tone looks quite warm here. The background looks quite, quite drab and gray, really. But when you turn it on, the image as a whole looks a lot better. Now, there's numerous different curves I could have used here. Um, for example, we could have used the sepia tone. So let's just amend this curve. So you remember from earlier, Kind of a tone I might use for sepia is something a little bit like that with the blue curve. We've already done the green curve, let's go and do the red. And that adds a kind of unifying warm tone. I don't like that anywhere near as much, but it does kind of key these key areas together. So let's just backtrack there. For me, this works really well. There's lovely, rich yellow highlights fading through to the kind of greens and blues in the background. Now the curve can be any shape you like. You can amend it as you see fit. And hopefully what I've provided you with in this short video is enough detail for you to go away and start experimenting and start playing around. 
If you're unsure about how to apply any of the techniques, work with the black and white image first. You get a much better sense of how these colors are applied and you get a much better understanding of how to manipulate all three of these curves to create a tone that matches your image. When you're working with black and white, it's easier to see the effect. When you're working with color, you're kind of overlaying a tone on top and sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. So start with black and white and then work towards color images. So that's it for this short video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much.